Hey everybody, it's time for my summary video of the summaries that you gave to me of your discussions. It's your favorite time of week. Yes, I know. Get excited. So, without further ado, here's my take on what you sent me. First of all, the uh, image of the man animal um, from Lascaux Cave, uh, I looked at it pretty closely for a long time, and no, I, I could not see a human in, in that form. I kind of would like, one of the groups said that, uh, one of the group members kind of like illustrated the face of uh, the person the way that they saw it, and I kind of wish I could see that because I, I, I only see um, an animal there. I don't really know uh, what they're getting at, but I think what impo what's important about the question is that uh, different archaeologists have different interpretations of the past. And ultimately, we can speculate about the past. But we don't really know exactly what, you know, the illustrator that made that image meant by it. Uh, we can kind of guess. I think it's probably ritualistic, and I think a lot of you said you probably thought it was ritualistic too, but we're never going to know for sure. We can really only use inductive reasoning uh, to in interpret the past. Um, we'll never know with 100% certainty. Let's see, what else do you guys have? So, oh, the difference between uh, art and images. Why don't we call this cave art anymore? Why do we call it images? And I think a lot of you guys actually in your discussions hit the nail right on the head, um, which is that uh, art seems to be, like a working definition of art would be creating images with some sort of purpose, whether it's an ideological purpose or you know, you have some sort of symbolic reasoning behind making an image. Um, and why we call them images now, why we don't call them art anymore, is because we just don't know why they were made. We don't know if they were made uh, to be symbolic. We don't know if they were, you know, supposed to be, you know, perfect depictions of things that these people saw in their daily lives. Uh, our definition of art is not something that can be used because we don't know if it can fit the reasoning behind these images. So it's just kind of irresponsible to throw that word around. I think image is a more accurate definition. Let's see here. As far as uh, Dr. McCorriston learning French rather than Acadian, uh, I mean, maybe it would have been useful for her to learn both, but like who's got time to do that? Ultimately, it's more useful for her to learn French because she was probably speaking with other people who learned French. She wasn't speaking with people who used Akkadian. And as a student, it would have been better for her uh, to speak with the experts who were also speaking French. They probably had an expert on site who was able to interpret Akkadian. That's the sort of thing that's just ultimately uh, less important. It's more important to learn more modern languages so that you can talk with other experts than it is to learn past languages. But it really depends on what your goals are. You know, let's see here. Next one. Oh, Dr. McCorriston's rock. Um, some of you said that it was okay for her to take the rock away from the cave. Some of you said it wasn't okay and that she should bring it back. Ultimately, you really shouldn't take anything from archaeological sites, uh, even if it's just a rock, because you risk you risk messing up uh, basically the site as it is in situ, and you don't want to move anything because anything could have meaning for an archaeologist, and you need to have the entire picture constructed as much as you can, like it was in the past, in order to get a full understanding of it. It wouldn't really make any sense for her to put the rock back at this point because then, you know, the, uh, the context of the rock would have been different. So at this point, you know, it's, it's fine if she keeps it, but it's the kind of thing that shouldn't be done. As a professional archaeologist, it's really frowned upon to take things from sites. Absolutely should not do that. Was it an artifact? Pretty much every group said that it wasn't, and you guys are all right. McCorriston's rock is not an artifact because it wasn't tampered with by humans. Um, it wasn't carved into a sculpture. It wasn't made into a flute. It was just a rock that was uh, made through natural processes.
But does this mean that the rock's not important? Absolutely not, because we use natural processes, I mean, natural things all the time to understand the past. Uh, different geological strata, for example, have different meanings for archaeologists. You know, maybe uh, a certain strata has, like, all of this silt and we thought that there was a river there or something like that. Or maybe you're a paleontologist and you can you can excavate uh, micro paleontological remains from the past and then you can pretty much reconstruct the environment if you're able to do that. Like all of these things, even if they're not artifact artifacts, are really important for having an understanding of what life was like in the past. So just because it's not an artifact uh, absolutely does not mean it's not important. Oh, let's see here. The people in Laskow Cave, as far as you know, their, their daily lives, you guys talked about that a little bit, and you, you had a good understanding of it, it seems like. Like, they were uh, largely nomad, nomadic people. They were hunter-gatherers a lot of the time. You know, this is before the last glacial maximum, so it was really cold. They probably had to shelter in caves for warmth. Um, they ate a lot of meat, a lot of gathered uh, berries and things like that, and this was like pre-agricultural. Uh, and the last question you guys had, I think pretty much every group was wondering about this, was why were there cave paintings in you know, France and Spain but not in Israel and Egypt? And the answer to that is kind of wrapped up in the lifestyle of the people who were living, you know, in each place. As far as the cave paintings go, uh, the people who were living in, in Europe at the time were, were nomadics uh, and they were hunter-gatherers as well, so they probably spent a lot of time in caves. Maybe not the same cave, but you know, caves for shelter. They were pre-agricultural, um, but the people in the Fertile Crescent area in Israel and Egypt uh, were in more stratified societies at that point, so they were like in city-states and they were beginning to develop agriculture. And a lot of their material expression was not in caves. They were uh, writing on you know, tablets and inscribing things on walls and uh, things like that, basically building up city structures. They were less nomadic. Uh, they were more agrarian. So there weren't cave paintings necessarily from that time. Uh, a lot of a lot of it was because of the environment of each place individually. Europe was a lot harsher at the time. Was sur like it was better for nomadic people to live there. And then in Egypt and Israel and the Levant, that general area, people were okay to settle down basically and create city states. So that's the main reason. Um, that really concludes my summary for this week. Uh, if you have any questions about the reading, feel free to reach out. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video uh, and have a good rest of your week. Thank you.